What's it all about? Are you having deep thoughts again? No, Christina, I'm talking about the central or main idea of an informational text. Oh, you mean what's the text all about? Yeah, that's what I just said. Mm. Yeah, sorta. The central or main idea is the key point an author is trying to make. In order to find the central or main idea, you gotta look closely for key details. And then ask yourself, what do these key details have in common? Ben likes to have conversations with himself. Uh, what's that? Nothing. As I was saying, you have to ask yourself... What do these details have in common? Right. The answer to this question will lead you to the central idea. And once you've got your central idea, you can use the details you've collected to craft a summary. And don't forget to be concise. A summary is a short statement that covers the most important ideas in a text. But remember, no personal opinions or judgments. Those don't belong there. Nope. I'll just have to save them up and tell them to you instead. Great. Let's summarize. <laughs> To determine the central or main idea of a text, think about what subject the details in each paragraph support or explain. Sorting the details and deciding what they have in common can help you determine the central or main idea. Identify the main idea of each paragraph or section using the details. Analyze the way ideas build on one another over the course of a text. Summarize the main ideas of each paragraph and use the summary to determine the central idea. To summarize a text, use your own words, write a topic sentence, and include only enough supporting details to demonstrate the central idea. Do not include personal opinions or judgments. If someone were to ask you what Winston Churchill's 1940 speech to Parliament, Blood, Toil, Tears, and Sweat, was about, how would you explain it? Chances are that your answer would be the central or main idea of the speech. How do readers analyze the details of a speech to determine a central idea? Sometimes a person states his or her objective early on in the speech. Here is the beginning of Churchill's speech. On Friday evening last, I received from His Majesty the mission to form a new administration. It was the evident will of Parliament and the nation that this should be conceived on the broadest possible basis and that it should include all parties. I have already completed the most important part of this task. A war cabinet has been formed of five members representing, with the Labour, Opposition and Liberals, the unity of the nation. It was necessary that this should be done in one single day on account of the extreme urgency and rigour of events. Other key positions were filled yesterday. I am submitting a further list to the King tonight. I hope to complete the appointment of principal ministers during tomorrow. By summarizing the important details in bold in the first paragraph, a reader can determine what they all have in common, and then identify the main idea. Churchill wants to inform Parliament that he has formed a new administration, or cabinet, to help unify the country during war. In Great Britain, the cabinet is made up of about 20 senior ministers chosen by the prime minister. It decides on government policy and coordinates the work of the different government departments. By identifying the important details in bold in the second paragraph, a reader can then determine that paragraph's main idea. A war cabinet was formed in extreme urgency, representing the unity of the nation. A summary of both paragraphs, then, does not include minor details or quoted text. Instead, the summary is given in a reader's own words 
working to include the main ideas of each paragraph. Churchill wants to inform Parliament that a war cabinet has been formed in urgency, representing the unity of the nation. 